backstory for Badger? Um, a cricket badger <laughs> is um, somebody who's probably a bit of a geek, a bit of a cricket tragic. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. It's, it's, it's used as a bit of a derogatory term in, in dressing rooms and stuff. Um, you're, you're a bit of a badger. Um, and I quite liked it. And I thought uh, for somebody that sort of delves into cricket and is a bit obsessed by it, it's not a bad title. So it's a so it's a British word. Is it a British word or a cricket word? It's a, it's a kind of crickety thing. I mean, obviously, nice. badger's a little black and white animal, but uh, in Australia, <laughs> I think, I think in Australia they call them cricket nuffies. Um, in oh. England, we call them cricket badges. We're yeah. learning something. So now, not too many Americans understand cricket. And like I think I always hear, at least from my perspective, oh, it's too complicated. Which it's not. No, it's not. Not at all. Um, so do you like could you explain cricket in like simple, like kid terms? American so that, terms. So Americans can understand Ooh. it. <laughs> you you're asking me a tough one there. There used to be a tea towel um which had uh, the rules explain rules to an American. Um, I haven't got the tea towel with me. Um but ah. basically it's eleven people per side, men or women. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. And you have a batting team and a fielding team at any one time. Um, all of the fielders go out there, all 11 fielders. Obviously, one person's bowling, one person is keeping wicket. So it's a little bit like baseball from right. that perspective. There's mm-hmm. a person that bowls the ball at the batter. Two batters are in at any one time. And they basically either defend it or try and hit it for runs. If they clear the fence, um, it's six. If it goes along the ground, it's four. Or you run. Um, if it goes into a gap, you can run runs to accumulate your total. Um, it's a, a, as a pitcher in baseball, you just throw it as hard as you can, don't you? But in cricket, the bowlers have got a little bit more about them. They have a shine on one side of the ball, which helps it swing. Um, they can bowl fast. They can bowl spin. Um, they probably need to be a little bit fitted because they run in, as, whereas your pitchers mm-hmm. just stand on that mound, don't they, and hurl the yep. ball down. Um, so <laughs> there's that that side of it. Uh, and there's different formats of cricket. You have test matches, which are five days long. They can finish in a draw, which I don't think Americans can get their head around. Uh, <laughs> when you have uh, one day cricket, they have t- sort of T20 or 50 over cricket. Um, England are currently world champions in both of those, which I'll just, I'll just throw in. Um, mm-hmm. And so that is for a set, set period of time, set number of balls bowled, um, overs bowled. So uh, you have to get more runs than your opposition in that period of time and you win, you win the game. So it's it, there's a bit more to it than that but it's uh, and there's all sorts of different ways you can get out if you're a batter um but generally speaking it's who can get the most runs who can uh, hit the ball the furthest get the most runs and uh wins the match first of all that was a phenomenal explanation it was really good second of all i was upset that you guys didn't get into the world test championship so you could have all three at the same time so that was frustrating for me as well <laughs> um well yeah yeah I mean, we're not like you Americans who just call things the world title and then just play it with yourselves. <laughs> Isn't Wait. that hilarious? I love that about us. World champions, but it's only us. It's just us. <laughs> well, you don't play this. It's ours. Even if you do play it, it's ours. We don't care. My favorite is the NBA, the National Basketball Association world champions like even in the name alone it doesn't make sense but you know we have so many players that are international anymore you know i guess you could you could tweak it that way yeah we gotta pick yourselves up up. (laughs) so you just described cricket really easily and it's really frustrating because baseball fans act like it's this complicated game but if you have you ever watched baseball james um i i kind of watched a little bit of it it's a little bit equivalent to rounders yeah At school you play yeah. rounders yeah, and, yeah, it's, rounders, and yeah. it's basically you kind of hit the ball and then you run from um across the bases don't you to try and get a home run or whatever i, I kind of know the basics of it yep. yeah and then you get three outs and you leave and the other team comes up until they get three outs and they leave and then you come back that doesn't even make any sense there's <laughs> a foul line so if you hit it really hard just outside of the foul line now it doesn't count at all yeah it, yeah. it really is complicated. And <laughs> it, but the thing is, is it's one of those things. If you, you know, in England and, you know, other you know, countries that used to be under colonial rule, of course, it's it's there. So, you know, it. So it's not that it either are more or less complicated. It's just the knowledge. And by the way, cricket's better anyway. So absolutely. Yeah. No question about it. So the ashes. So this is why we called you up, because we need your inside scoop. So the ashes are currently taking place and it's always a big deal. For cricket fans, especially over there, it's the longest format of the game. So what is what is so exciting about the Ashes? Why is it so popular when it lasts for so long? It's a rivalry. It's been going on since 1877, which is nearly as long as your country's been in existence. <laughs> uh, it, has, it first was played in Melbourne 
in that year. Um, mm-hmm. That was the first ever test match. Um, then in 1882, um, when the Aussies came to England, they won at uh, the Oval in London at the cricket ground there. And in one of the newspapers, they did a, did a little bit of satire. Uh, mm-hmm. And it basically read something along the lines of Eng- England cricket has died and the body will be <laughs> cremated and the ashes taken to Australia. <laughs> As a bit of a joke. Right. But it got, Very dramatic. It got kind of taken up a little bit. The journalist then said next time England went to Australia, they were going to reclaim the ashes. There were some women in Australia um, got a little urn together and they presented that to the England team. Oh. And uh, that it, that is probably, you know, it's still in existence. The, the little urn itself is only four inches high. It's, I think it's the smallest <laughs> trophy, smallest big sporting trophy um, in, in the world. And um, it is held in the Museum at Lords in London. Um, so when you see the players um, celebrating the little urn at the end of the series, that isn't the real one. That's like a 1099 one out of the shop. Um, <laughs> but, uh, the, I think if you picked up the original one there, it would probably just crumble in your hands because it's very old. <laughs> so but, uh, old. Uh, and it's been played ever since. And uh, there's got big, um, there's a big rivalry between England and Australia. Um, winning the Ashes is huge for both countries, and at the moment, unfortunately, Australia hold them. Yeah, it's not looking. It's not looking very good either. Yeah, that was the first thing that surprised me when I saw the very first picture. As I was learning about cricket and I was researching the Ashes, and I was like, "Is that a joke? That little tiny thing?" But then oh, you know, no, no. yeah, you know the whole yeah. story. Yeah. Oh, so there's a. We've had one match of this series so far. There's still four Test matches to play, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a bit bit fearful, Joe. A bit fearful that this zombie apocalypse is going to. Um, stop this Ashy series in its tracks. So, how is it looking over there? Is it is it holding up? It's at Lords, right? The current match is at Lords, right? Yeah, um, yeah. There's zombies all over London at the moment. How are they? How are they protecting Lords? Um, they've they've tried to get a, a bit of a perimeter boundary sorted out. Obviously, it's all got cameras there, um, keeping the zombies ah. at bay. Um, the stewards are not looking after the crowd anymore. They're just kind of marshalling the fence. But they should get the game. They should get the game. The good news is, if it if it's a draw, nobody will be disappointed. <laughs> now the yeah, question is, is, can you teach a zombie to play cricket? Um, I mean, they wouldn't need pads or any protection, would they? You know, <laughs> just no. get their leg blown off by the ball, wouldn't they? Because the cricket ball's very hard, you know, Gina. It's uh, um, not it's not a soft thing. If you get hit on the head or hit on the um, on the body with a cricket ball, you know about it. So a zombie, even though they are undead, it would probably do them a bit of damage. So that's a really good way to protect ourselves. Get a little cricket bat and ball, get them out of there. And tell have me, seen, though. Have you seen Shaun of the Dead, the film Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, oh. well, that's what I was thinking about. Is Shaun yeah, of the they, Dead. they, they, they use bat. a cricket bat and that to actually uh, Famous um, hit, the, hit the zombies over the head with the cricket bat. Yeah, yeah pretty good. I was surprised yeah. that they didn't use a cricket bat in 28 Days Later, which is one of my favorite all-time zombie movies. <laughs> well, I mean, they should remake it, shouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> if only we could get movies made now. Now, Basball... Tell me how that's, how everybody's, that's changing. Everybody's talking about that. What is that? Um, it's, a, it's a phrase that's been coined by the media, you'd be surprised to know, rather than the actual oh. team itself. Oh, but, really? Um, Brendan McCullum, the New Zealander, has, has come uh, across to England to be head coach of the English side. Um, oh. His nickname is Baz, um, instead of Brendan. One syllable instead of two. And um, they basically have created this kind of no fear cricket go out there and if you've got two options choose the positive option try and hit the ball rather than defend it if uh, if you're in any doubt and it started to be quite entertaining England have been ticking along in test matches at uh, uh, a ridiculous rate of knots mm-hmm. and it wasn't too long in Brendan McCullum's reign that they christened it buzz ball because it was attacking and uh it's far simpler than um using a long sentence when you can just use the phrase buzz ball isn't it? <laughs> Very American, I feel. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like very. the. Aggr- I think because that's one of the things is it's very aggressive, but be keeping it British, it's positively aggressive. So that's really freaking cool. Yeah, and the the, the, the um, good thing about it is that the Australians are actually quite not a negative side, but they don't play as attacking a form of as an entertaining form of cricket as England. But there's a little bit of a debate at the moment about whether the reckless style of England is going to be able to cope with the very very good more. A moderate style of oh. uh, Australia, so it's you've got that kind of yin and yang thing going on at the moment in this series, where two different styles coming up against each other. Which one's going to be the best? There they go again. So, do you think it's like going to be like body line part two? Uh, well, body line was one of the big parts of, uh, uh, of the Ashes. 
um, back in the early 30s when um, England went down there with some fastballs and tried to blow the heads off the Australians. <laughs> um, and it get, ended up being discussed in Parliament and all sorts. That caused a lot of controversy. Not, It's not quite got into that realm just yet. Okay, good. So if you could resurrect any, let's say, any bowler, any batsman, and any wicketkeeper in the zombie apocalypse to put together your zombie team, who uh-huh. would you bring back to life? They're zombies, Ooh. but they play like they're prime. But they're still gentlemen. They're gentlemen zombies. <laughs> um, I think we'd have to get Don Bradman out of the ground. Ah, yes. Um, Absolutely. Because he is probably the, the most famous of uh, the players of yesteryear, Australian, um, and averaged 99.94 in test matches. When he came out at the Oval to play his last ever game, I think he needed to score four runs to get a career average of 100 or more. Nobody's ever got anywhere near that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was out for a duck, got out for naught <laughs> on his final appearance. <laughs> so his average is 99.94, but it's almost better That's for awful. that. 99.94 is more of a story. So he was um, he was out uh, cheaply in his last one, but incredible play. It'd be great to see him playing. Um, only ever seen sort of old grainy footage of... Uh, of Don Bradman. Mm-hmm. Um, I think um, if we come to an all-rounder, an Ashes all-rounder, Ian Botham, he's not dead, so we don't need to resurrect him. But he um, he is um, famous for his 1981 heroics. He was captain at the start of the series, had a terrible time as captain. England were 2-0 down in the five-match series. He uh, was replaced by Mike Brealey as captain. Um, Ian Botham returned to the ranks and blazed centuries, took wickets, won the last three test matches almost single-handedly. And that goes down as Botham's ashes. So Ian Botham deserves his place um, in a wow. uh, in a team. And then Absolutely. a wicketkeeper. Um, wicketkeeper. We'll go with Alan Knotts. He's my favourite. I okay. saw my first games down in Kent and he was the Kent keeper and he was just a genius. Oh, nostalgia there. Absolutely. One specific famous Ashes series that you'd recommend for Americans to watch. The full series. Which one would you choose and why? 2005. Um, there's a lot of the current team are inspired by. I was going to say they're talking about that one a lot right now. Yeah, um, it goes down as probably the certainly in the modern era the most iconic. Uh, Michael Vaughan was England captain. Um, they took on an Australian side who had been dominant. Uh, you know, they'd ba- basically been everybody. Um, they'd thrashed England millions of times, it seemed. And uh, when they turned up in England, um, Australia were hot favourites to win. But England decided that they were going to try and go toe to toe with them. They lost the first test match at Lords, um, but then the series was just every game was dramatic. Every game had something in it. Um, they won at um, Edgbaston in Birmingham by two runs. England um, getting a wicket just before Australia got uh, across the line to win. I was at Trent Bridge as England just managed to score enough runs on the final day. The great late great Shane Warne. Yes. Um, we'll get him into that uh, zombie apocalypse. Oh, yes. As well, Good call. He's an absolute genius. Mm-hmm. Um, but he uh, he was turning the ball square with his spin, and England just managed to get across the line to win that one. And then Kevin Peterson and co. batted out at the Oval for a draw in the final um, game at the Oval to uh, seal the series win. And it goes, you know, there were DVDs made of that series. People <laughs> still talk about it now. So that goes down as a very, very famous Ashes series. That is the one that we will watch. Yeah, we have to go back. And yeah, Shane Warren, unbelievable. Yeah, Shane was. And I actually saw on Channel 9 in Australia had done this um, drama series of uh, Shane Warren. I wanted to try and get hold of that because uh, it looked quite, uh, I don't know if it was cheesy or whether it was good. I couldn't quite <laughs> work out from the trailer. But uh, um, yeah, incredible and sadly missed as well because he was a commentator for yeah. TV, both in Australia and in, in England. And I think a lot of people, um, including me, miss him. And his insight into the game, but yeah, Too young. As, as a player, just an absolute genius. He tried to make it here in America for a while. He tried to get into movies, and, I, and I, his biggest claim to fame here is he partied and and hung out with Snoop Dogg. Oh yeah, yeah. He liked to party. He liked to party. <laughs> he, he dated he dated Liz Hurley for a while, which mm-hmm. is no mean feat. And um, <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he he. I think he packed a lot into his into his life. Uh, you know, he gone too soon, but he 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 crammed a lot in. Agree. 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 I feel like we, whatever that show comes up with, it'll definitely be, um, uh, they have a lot to work off of. So that'd be pretty cool. But now tell us, what do you have coming up next? What exciting things are you working on? What is next for um, James Butler? Well, hopefully um, existence into tomorrow. But I'm not yeah. so sure now because the zombies are getting closer. Oh, no. Um, yeah, no. But, yeah, there's one that just appeared at the window. Okay, let's um, wrap this up. There, then. Which is not good. Um, I'm on a <laughs> so he's, a very, he's a very, very tall zombie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, got the rest of the English summer, the cricket. Um, <laughs> I also do some work in football as well, so it's not too long before the Premier League starts again. That's in August. 
Um, and then I'm oh. planning a trip to India for the Cricket World Cup. Um, oh, nice. Oh, that's in cool. October, November. Never been to India. India, wow. 1.4 billion people who pretty much love cricket. Um, all of them love cricket. Absolutely. Um, so the crowds there and the atmosphere there is going to be absolutely incredible. So, yeah, looking forward to that. If that trip comes off, that should be uh, a lot of fun for six weeks following England in India. And we can, oh. follow, we can follow you on Twitter. And are you on anywhere else? Um, get me on at cricket underscore badger um, on Twitter. I'm more than happy to have more followers on that. And uh, you can um, watch me uh, rant away about cricket all day long. And uh, <laughs> hopefully um, there will be more tweets to follow because that zombie is now climbing through the window and coming oh, to get no. me. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, hey, well, you fight him off, grab your cricket bat, and uh, we'll... Shot of the dead. Right. Yeah, shot of the dead, I mean, get it out of there. <laughs> he's, he's climbed in, he's breaking through. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Yeah. I love how, the, how our United Kingdom guests die so civilly. Yes, they're so polite. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so please don't, do, please don't do that, Mr. Zombie. That's very, very rude of you. Yeah. <laughs> Offer him some tea, perhaps? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's like a picnic. <laughs> crumpet? <laughs> <laughs> What's cricket without a crumpet? Oh, and there he goes. Oh. He's gone. Oh, God. Oh. oh, man. I was really hoping James would make it for the Cricket World Cup. James the Cricket Badger, this is a song you die to.